Make a strip panel. Pax Prime 2015. <clears throat> now, I did not know that we had a sign language interpreter. This is very exciting, <laughs> but I feel strongly compelled to do certain things <laughs> just because I want to know what it looks like. So hopefully, hopefully they will endure this incursion on their space watermelon <laughs> with with all what's that abortion <laughs> you need to write a script oh here oh sorry yeah i have to work I have something to do yeah. hey bud You gotta type. I know, I know, I know. Is everybody having a good PAX? You have to preface it with that? They're all weird ones, aren't they? This is a weird one, though. He's not wrong. No, no, you gotta go quicker, man. I need time to draw this. It's a very special time back there. <laughs> Is that your ring or your text message? No? So, sometimes, sometimes one line, we'll think one line deserves a strip. And so we had the line, you know how some lizards have dicks, right? But we couldn't figure out really what to do with it. And then we're like, it needs, to, it needs its own comic. <laughs> Gab like that one? <laughs> it really is a weird one. I had forgotten. We wrote this a few days ago. Okay. <laughs> you shouldn't ever have to ask somebody that. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. He's a professional. That's a weird word. With so much drama, what are you doing there? I just I want to see. With so much drama in the LBC, it's kind of hard being Snoop D O Double G. <laughs> but I somehow, some way, keep coming up with funky ass shit like every single day. Did that get you up there, Gav? 
Did that work for you? Hey, uh, we know he is going to entertain you with his visual stylings. I'll do what I can with this stack of questions. Hopefully none of these questions will be about um, erectile dysfunction, as occasionally happens uh, in this game. If you both played a game wherein you each predicted the reactions and behaviors of the other for one week, who would get the most correct? Basically, oh, this is like a dating game type show. Basically, who knows their counterpart better or is able to predict, able to predict them better? Uh, I mean, I pretty much know how every night for you goes from nine on. Yeah, you know me way better, absolutely. Yeah, I am aware of stimuli, and I think of other people as fully human, I guess. You got me there. Yeah. <laughs> it involves destiny. Uh, and something else. Freckles, ah, that's true. Freckles appeared on Gabe in the strip shortly after PAX East and disappeared in March. Where did they come from and where did they go? It's a mystery. Uh, no, I mean, I have been, I've been trying lots of different stuff this year and freckles were one of the things I tried. They had their moment in the sun and then they faded. Moment in the sun, is that the... Oh, shit. Yeah. Wow. That's some next level shit there, kid. I don't even know when I'm doing it half the time. <laughs> Did slash does the recording of your creative process for the podcast or for PA the series ever change the way you would normally interact with each other while making a strip? For example, toning down the language or forcing yourself to stay on point more to pack it into a reasonable length. Uh, this is from Matthew Fairchild in Munich, Germany. Gosh, the reality is that a lot of times we forget. You would think that having a microphone like on your face would be something that you would be able to keep track of mentally. And a lot of times when we're recording the podcast, we completely forget that. It's true. Right. And that's why we end up having, I mean, I don't know. Like when I think about the conversation that we had about um, just like, like, the, like, the, like way, way down, like how our minds actually operate and why this actually functions. I think that podcast came out this week. Oh, did it? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I would not have I said that stuff. <laughs> no, if I had known I was being recorded. Now yeah. understand that I, had the, I put the microphone on my head. And you I had him button. put a microphone on his head. I checked the levels of these microphones, activated a recording device, and then somehow forgot that we were being recorded. But that was when I came back from Scotland, and we had to, we had to confab. We had to resynchronize somehow. If the planets align and there is a second season of strip search, are you going to step up the horror factor when you destroy a young artist's webcomic and with that, their dreams? Uh, <clears throat> this is from Morgan in Australia. And I would say that whenever I think about strip search, like I, I think that we were really lucky with that crop of artists. I mean, we watched, a lot of, we watched a lot of videos. We chose the ones that we thought. And the reality is that we're still in contact with most of them. Yeah. Like, so a lot of them moved up. Um, my fantasy is to start a rap group with Nick and Dave called Triumvirate. I uh, have the logo. It's Triumvirate, but there's three eyes, and the eyes are red. So if you ever see that logo... That is really detailed. Why? I, I, this is what I, when I lay awake at night and I look at the ceiling, I imagine that I'm a rap artist, uh, specifically with Nick and the rest of them. But as far as destroying the stuff, like that's the other thing that I think about, just different ways to obliterate that stuff. I feel like fire didn't come into play enough last time. I feel like fire is a very traditional destruction method. Classic, um, really. I feel like there's a lot of headroom in that. If you suddenly found yourself back at the Maidenbauer Center, that's a funny face, Michael. Uh, if you suddenly found yourself back at the Maidenbauer Center on the first day of PAX 2004, what would you do? What would you tell your younger self? Um, I, would, I would tell that person that it was okay, but I can never seem to remember that now. Like, for some reason, when PAX starts, I think that this is going to be the time, like, the earth cracks open. Yeah. And monsters come out. And it's like, ah! and it's like, ah! 
ah, you know, but yeah. thus far, you know, for the most part, monster free. Yeah, I mean, people ask us variations on that time travel question. My answer is always that I, I wouldn't say anything because, you know, you don't want to mess up something, right? Like, what if you say, like, oh, man, it's going to be great. And so then younger Mike is like, oh, I'll take it easy. <laughs> like, what well, if yeah. he doesn't, you know, it changes things. Exactly right. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think that would actually function at all. Fucking time travel. Has Gabe expanded any, not you, Gabe, this is your larvae, oh. um, on his Lost Lands game, <laughs> and could we possibly have another podcast of the game? The last one was amazing, and I'd love to hear more about it. <laughs> uh, he has not worked on Lost Lands anymore. Um, it was a phase. It was, you know, 10-year-olds definitely go through phases. <laughs> Do you have any desire to make more Lost Lands, Gabriel? You he want wants to. to. It's in there. It's, it's in, in him. It's in his heart. All right. Well, then you'll have to start working on it, buddy. Yeah. Seems like there's an audience. I don't know. There's a magic chair. I liked it. Um, after hearing... <laughs> after hearing that Mike has a sock puppet account on Reddit to hide his musings, I am now curious what type of musings does he post... I post Destiny fan fiction. No, and that's exactly right. Dude, and you get and you get you get lit up on there too. I got some upvotes. Some people like my stories. But then sometimes it's like this isn't the appropriate place for this filth. Yeah, I did get <laughs> I did get that one. You need to get your shit out of here. No, I mean I've got I got well here's the thing, right? So I, I the Destiny comic that's called fan fiction. Right. I, I wrote that. I came yeah, yeah. in and you, you added some words and yeah, you, you absolutely. spiced it up. But for was, the most part, I was glad to. When I write something, I see it as a comic and then I have to spend a week or, you know, whatever making it. And then I was like, eventually, I was like, shit, I could just write this stuff down and not have to draw it. It's a good system. It's so much easier. So, yeah, I got an account. I post my musings, see, see, you're my gonna, thoughts about the traveler. You're going to have to meet an artist, too. And then make them draw all your stuff. Maybe someday, yeah. And then you and I will just be over here and they'll draw. Yeah. Uh, we all know from watching the new hire episodes of PATV that Robert can be quite intimidating and that he even enjoys being intimidating. <laughs> what intimidates Robert, though? He is, of course, welcome to come up on stage and answer this himself if he dares... I doubt he's even here. No, he was, he was actually in the back pinning, like putting coup faces on his lanyard. And so that's, if you really want to get intimidated, if you've got like the Robert here, like Robert Prime, and then he's sort of festooned, he has all these other tiny angry Roberts <laughs> in a kind of orbit. Like that's, it's like when the beams on the Death Star come together and then there's just like one beam and then there was a planet, but then the planet is gone. I've never seen him intimidated, though. I can't, I can't think of a time. No, that's true. What? Hmm? Roller coasters. Oh. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess there's like some things like that, but he just wouldn't go on there, I guess, or spicy food. Oh, but maybe it's because he's intimidated by Maybe it. he's intimidated by the roller coaster. See, he makes us think it's like this choice where he's like, I just don't do that stuff. <laughs> right? That's not, a part of, that's not a part of my brand. Right. Um... Yeah, Robert, he's like getting into like meditation and stuff now. Yeah. Like he's, he, is, he is just a, an orb of peace until it's time to activate the device. Uh, what is the craziest thing you've heard Robert or others on the PAX team rage over while trying to get PAX set up? Like when, when they found somebody had pooped in one of the rooms. Yes! That was the weirdest. Yeah, that no, was... It, it, yeah, it happened before the show, and it was like in one of the meeting rooms or something like yeah. that. Um, this is just years and years ago. Yeah. The poop is gone. I want to make sure everybody knows that... It's not here anymore, no. He, yeah, it's, it's been dealt with. Um, but <laughs> I was just surprised. That's not, you know, that's not a conversation one expects to have. I mean, historically speaking, poop goes in a very specific place. Yeah. Right? But yeah, shit. It makes an impression. 
You guys have alluded to conflict over religion in the past, but nowadays you seem much more on the same page, in as much as Mike doesn't seem at all serious about God these days. <laughs> <laughs> Has Jerry heathenized you? That's the, that's the verb of the year. Heathenized? I'm constantly heathenizing motherfuckers. I heathenize every day. Uh... No, I don't. I wouldn't say that my uh, my opinion has changed. I think that my um, desire to argue or care what anyone else thinks <laughs> Wait, has to, changed. To, to argue, the, the, how much value you get out of arguing about impossible, ethereal, eternal beings? Yeah, I mean that seems like a huge waste of time. Yeah. To Mike or Jerry, you have battled Bungie in ping pong, and now Mike is obsessed with their game Destiny. Uh, you obviously can talk to them. Has your relationship improved or been hurt by this? Any funny stories? Uh, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's ever been hurt by it. They certainly continue to be nice to us. Um, and they did get that one chance. Remember they, they wrecked us in Halo? Yeah. We agreed to play them, and that was a bad idea. No, it turns out that they're really good at Halo. Yeah. They know which buttons to press, uh, and, and, and this is crucial, when to press them. That's it's the really trick. A, it's a combination of both things. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, The yeah. first time I ran Vault of Glass was with a bunch of guys from Bungie. Yeah, they, they taught you how to do the jumping puzzle? Yeah, they're really cool. Yeah. It's not a bad crew. But I've never had, I mean, in, the, in the 17 years we've been doing this, how many developers can you remember that were, like, seriously pissed at us? You know what? It's very rarely... It's very rare. It's very rarely developers. It's people who are on... It's people who are in management yeah. or on the public relations side. Because we're, like, directly opposed to them. This is, this is the thing. When, when you talk to a, a developer, generally speaking, they know with precision what is wrong with their game. Yeah. Like, they, it's, it's hard for them. I mean, but these things have to come out at some time, right? Have the expanding business and legal aspects of the Penny Arcade Empire affected how you view the actions um, of off-derided gaming industry corporations like EA or Sony? Um... I would say I would say it isn't so much the expanding business and legal aspects. It's having having been on teams that made games. I would say that if any what it, all it did was humanize, like just just how hard it is. And the games that I worked on were relatively simple affairs. I mean, I had a lot of responsibility on them. Like if you saw a word in one of the Precipice games, like I wrote it. Right? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. That's very nice of you. But, I mean, actually seeing what that's like is, I mean, it, you get a lot of sympathy for that, for that task. And like I say, the stuff that I worked on was, you know, trivial in comparison to like a mirror's edge or something like that. And I think that that's a really, I think that that's a really hard job. So if I'm going to, I kick microphones, deal with it. Um, if, if I'm going to say something now, I, I, I want it to be useful for the most part. I don't, I don't want to just kick and have fun, you know, say, I'm way smarter than these guys, because I know that they're basically doing the impossible on more or less a daily basis. You were both, along with many of your comrades, are now confirmed parental units. You must have as have all who came before you familiarized yourself with the comedic genre known as dad jokes. Please regale us now with your favorite dad joke. Oh, man. Yeah, it's Something pretty good. Something the kids hate when you say... Oh, I know what Gabe hates. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I mean, it's not really a dad joke. Um, I don't know. It's not, no, that's not a dad joke. When, when he Yeah, it's like, so we need to firmly delineate these, yeah. right? Well, I mean, you must have things that you say to your son that just drive him crazy. Right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. the best. Right. But it's, see, it's a joke to us, but he wouldn't think of it as well, a Well, he joke. wouldn't even perceive it as right. a dad joke. 
So this, this is the thing. So it's like a lot of times I'll just test things out on him, but you, know, it's, you can't really get him with it because what he, the first thing he does, he doesn't even groan. He just grades it. So oh. I'll, I'll kick the joke out, and I'll be like, meh, meh, meh. And then he will just give me a grade, like a letter grade. Wow. He doesn't perceive it at all. And so generally speaking, every now and then I'll get a B. But what? one of one of them is a is a line from a MC Paul Barman song. So generally speaking, after I do after I deliver one of my unerring shots, he will say, "Spongy, spongy grade Z lunch meat held together with a scrunchie," and that's like his grade for my premium material. Wow, and it's it's hurtful, right? Yeah. But generally speaking, if, if one of them if one of them falls down or gets hurt. Do you have anything? Do you have any ways to comfort children? Uh, I usually just say you're tough. No, say you're a tough guy. No, what I'll say is like, son, it looks pretty bad. That your arm looks pretty bad. We should replace it with a crab's arm. <laughs> yeah, mine is just, oh my god, let's go. We're going to the hospital now, and then it doesn't hurt as bad usually. It's like, no, the, the only thing worse, right? You're gonna need a shot. <laughs> no, it feels. It no, feels it's good. okay. No, I'm whole, Father. I'm whole. No, the, the one I say don't to, take me there. The one I say to Gabe that drives him crazy is make good choices. As he leaves, no, it's just he'll be saying something that I know is getting on towards attitude. Make good choices. Oh, he's on the Nimbus yeah. of attitude. The attitude event horizon. Yeah. You can see the attitude coming. What's the word on strip search? Any chance of a 2016 season two? Yes, that's what I wanted to do, Phil Bucket. Yeah, I yeah I I am I am ready to do that. We we have we have oh God Robert would be mad. Um, I have no idea what's going on with strip search, um, other than to say that that is pretty near and dear to us, and I think that I think that a second season would be absolutely beast. Like, the question came up before about just how to wreck things. Like, the show, I really, really liked the show because it, it was right in between. Like, it sort of knew what it was doing, but then it would still take it too far. It had a really, really odd mix of self-awareness and then, like, trying to epitomize reality show bullshit at the same time. Um, I would love, love, love to execute on that again. Holy shit, this is like a novella. All right, this is a red envelope. First, thanks to Gabe for turning me on to the Surface Pro 3, which I love despite its flaws, and Hearthstone, which I'm basically addicted to. You said that four paxes is your maxes. But I don't know that I ever rhymed it, no. Yeah. <laughs> but with three in America, other continents seem shortchanged. As a European... Stop uh, it. I'm going to go over here, and I'm not going to kick the microphone anymore. I mean, there's no reason for you to stand that close. Well, I just, I, I like you. I just want to be close. I just want to feel your warmth. Um, I know there's a PAX Oz, and maybe this year, but it's still pretty far away. Have you ever thought of making one PAX a roving affair and moving continents each year? South America, Europe, mainland Asia, North America, etc. For many people, PAX isn't an every year thing. And I know it's oversubscribed in North America, but it would still give more people a chance to attend. Or what about some kind of semi-franchise deal where you let other people do some of the grunt work, like TEDx, although I know that has its problems. Uh, you all do a great job. It'd be nice if it was possible to make the PAX experience accessible to more folks. And I agree. At different times, at different times we have thought, especially about that second plan, about trying to make it something or make it part of another show to sort of have like a a little Switzerland-type adjunct to an existing European convention. But PAX is really special. And, and generally speaking, we try to, if we're going to do a PAX somewhere, you know, we know how it should go. Like enforcers know how it should go. And I think that, generally speaking, we're never able to come to terms with the places we would like to partner with um, on what it actually means to be a PAX. Well, and I think when you start talking about a, like a roving show, yeah, well, that's not PAX well, either. Well, then that's, with, that's making a new show. Well, yeah, then you're dealing with boroughs and like you're dealing with all this shit, right? 
And how would it get, how would you, how would it get around? The show? Yeah, like, I mean, presumably when they're talking about this roving show, we're talking about caravans. I would think trains, trucks, maybe. Yeah. That's not as cool. I was, I was with it. When it was when you thought that like giant birds would haul our stuff, well, from yeah, and it, we, place to place, we would roll in and we would throw the tents out. We'd have like you know fire eaters and shit, trains. We what is when the circus comes to town? Exactly. What is was your favorite edition of D and D, A D and D, and why? This is from Vladimir in Minneapolis. I like I liked four because it brought it sort of brought my friend Mike into the game. Yeah, that's the only one I've really spent that much time with. I guess the only time I play five is when we're on stage. Yeah, that's true. Um, and I, I thought that four was neat because I, I really like like Final Fantasy tactics. Like I like tactics style games, and it was fun to have a cooperative tactics type game to play on the table. But the higher level you get, like the more, like, structurally it seems like it didn't work. Like, it just sort of fell apart for us. Yeah. Um, I like five, but, I mean, that's really like saying I like two, right? So, same diff. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I never played two. Yeah. Uh, the very first version I ever played was the really, really old one. Like, the advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Like, like, not, like the old, old, old one where they're, like, climbing up on the statue and, like, trying to, trying to get a gem out of a statue's eye. Right. You know what I mean? Like... And I was like six years old. And, you know, if you're going from, I mean, really, when you're that age, it's like, what kind of games are you playing? Okay, you're Candyland. Playing, yeah, you're playing, you're playing Candyland. You're playing checkers. You're playing shoots and ladders. Yeah. And, and then you're playing Dungeons and Dragons. Only one of those has dragons. Yeah, exactly. And as soon as you, as soon as you get into that continuum where there, there might be boards or there might be pieces or you roll dice in the same way, but everything else is happening you know, inside your skull, like, that is a life-changing experience. Real quick, could we get this clock to reflect actual time? <laughs> That's possible? Yes, yes. As, <laughs> as men reckon time. Um, Tycho, why do you naturally gravitate towards support-type roles in video games? Uh, for example, in League of Legends... Is it a matter of personality, play style, or both? Also, who taught you to play Leona so well? Uh, this is from Egulosity in Saskatoon, Canada. And Egulosity taught me how to play <laughs> Leona so well. So, yeah, that's what he's doing there. But, yeah, Egg, yeah. He was, he was my mentor. Like, I've never had that relationship, like, with a person online. Like a coach. Yeah, like a, like a life coach. Yeah. Where you'd come in, and he'd like, be the ADC, and then I was just like... I used to play with, when I would switch over and do support for Kiko, I'd go back, like, at these very specific thresholds, and Kiko would be like, why are you going back? I'm like, egg taught me. <laughs> I go back at this time. <laughs> I buy this thing. Exactly. Um, generally speaking, I like the support type roles because I'm not effective in any other role. <laughs> and I found that the best way for me to succeed in a game, like the best way for me to accomplish goals, generally speaking, victory, um, is to just be in between Kiko and the bullets. And so if Kiko is here, and then the bullets are coming this way, if I stand here and just absorb the bullets and die, um, I still win. <laughs> I still get to win. And all I did was die over and over. And so just, just from an efficiency standpoint, you would have to appreciate that technique. Um, but generally speaking, I mean, that's what I do in every other context. Like, that's what I try to do for, that's what I try to do for Mike or Chris Straub or Scott. Like, I just, I want, I want to be there when someone does something amazing. And if I can help them do it, then that makes me feel good. Thank you. I recently turned 21 do you have any wisdom as it pertains to my newfound legal freedoms? <laughs> Will booze help my PAX experience? <laughs> this will be my second PAX. Matt High Miller, Milwaukee. Um, let's see. 
How do we do this? I don't, I don't drink. Yeah, hydration. Uh, obviously, that's key. Well, I, I'm just thinking about when I, was, when I was 21, I mean, most of that is not, like, I lost track of linear time when I turned 21. And so my experience there is probably not super helpful. Um, generally speaking, I would probably do most of my drinking after the show because you never know if Robert is there. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's going to try to tip it up. He's going to reach for the flask and be like this, and Robert's going <laughs> to... You know what I mean? Yeah, he's everywhere. Yeah. And nowhere. <laughs> Camp We Don't Watcha is the best comic on Penny Arcade. <laughs> That's awesome. How does that make you feel? They're not wrong. No, I, I feel great about it. Wait, was I, that just a statement? There was yeah. no question? Yeah, yeah. No, the question is how From does it Katie make you... Rice in <laughs> Seattle, Washington. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The que how does it make you feel? I, I, oh, how does it make you feel? It makes me feel great. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I guess we sort of talked about it in a post a while ago, but, you know, once you have kids or you sort of get into that dad mode, I'm able to derive a ridiculous amount of pleasure from sort of helping and seeing other people succeed. Right. Right? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the idea that that, that would make me feel bad, I guess, is... Yeah, I, you've enabled weird. something incredible. Yeah. How does that make you feel? Really good. <laughs> I like the egg she hatched of. I have, I have, I have absolutely no problem with it. Um, will there ever be a good movie based on a video game? Granted, games have become so cinematic in scope and execution that it may make their adaptation conversion into actual cinema superfluous. But if there is to be a commercially and critically successful video game movie, what game do you see that being? Well, typically, right, you get the, you get like the movie adaptation game, and that's almost always a fucking nightmare. Yeah, but going the other way, what game do you yeah, think but, but the reality, could be right? the one that succeeds? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's just differences between movies and games. It's just, they're just not the same thing. And so you can't really map it straight across. But there was a period of time where we thought that a good comic movie was not possible. Yeah, someone just has to figure out how to do it. Exactly. Honestly. And, and here, and, you know, listen, those comic movies didn't get rad until people who grew up reading comics started making movies. Right. Right? And so, I mean, when that happens, like, I mean, my understanding is that there's going to be a Minecraft movie from the guys that did Lego. I that would have said great. that there couldn't be a good Lego movie, but the Lego movie fucking bangs. Yeah. So, you know, this, this, is a, this is a movie about some plastic. So, you know, it turns out you can do it pretty good. Um, that's how I feel. We said there couldn't be a good comic movie, and now we're fucking drowning in them, so... Yeah. I saw that. Well, I see, think no, Assassin's no. Creed could be good, too. Hold on, so there's, like, like, legit, a Borderlands movie was announced? Yeah. Oh, well, that's going to that's gonna be fly. Mikey Newman is going to, yeah. I mean, again, like, exactly, Mikey Newman, right? So there's, there's certain people around which all of these things occur, and he is just, he is a ridiculous creator. Like, he cannot, he can't be contained at all. And, like, Borderlands has just happened to be one of his crazy-ass mind tendrils. There's no reason to believe he couldn't shepherd something like that, too. Jerry and Morak. Hmm. Uh, do you gentlemen, as fathers and gamers, ever play D&D &D or magic with your kids and or wives? I have three daughters, and the oldest eight wants to do everything daddy does, including D&D &D and magic. Nice work. Hmm. Uh, what age do you think is appropriate for each? Uh, do your wives participate? Mine won't. Please tell her to. <laughs> Jay, Justin, Terry from Gridley, California. Uh, so Gabe is 10, and he just recently got into magic pretty seriously. He was into uh, Pokemon for a long time. But right, then Pokemon's I think, like the farm league for magic, yeah, right? Yeah, I think once you hit the double digits, maybe you feel that urge Wait, to I, try I, something a little bit more. There's that, I think. But also, do you think that part of it is like, he, he turns 10 and he's like, I don't think electric mice are cool anymore. I want to see some blood. No, he still likes electric mice a lot. Yeah? Yeah. 
Um, I think you're just sort of ready for something more oh, mature, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we play Magic. Uh, Kara has never played Magic, but she used to play the WoW TCG, and she played Pokemon with me. Right. Um, yeah, all games at my house are like a, a thing that we usually do as a family. Um, and I think card games are great for kids. Like, Noah's already, he's five, we're getting him into Pokemon, so. Right. I mean, you've said it before, like, they're reading, they're doing math. No, it, there's it's, no reason it's not like, to. It is, it is like the greatest trick the devil ever pulled, right? Right. It's like, well, I'm sorry, in order to, in order to play this fun game with dad, you're going to have to learn to read and do complex math. <laughs> with, seriously, it's like, it's like it deals X damage per mana. This is right. just algebra. Don't fucking, you know, let's just, let's just be honest with what's happening here. Yeah, Gabe was breaking down one of those like devotion to red cards, and it's like, okay, yeah, you're doing more complex stuff than I did. Yeah, I'm with it. Yeah, right now, Elliot, is, he's still doing some Pokemon TCG stuff, but I mean, I think eventually, like I say, you, just, you get up to that magic level eventually. Yeah. Oh, it'll be there. We, we you know, we're, we're, we're well versed in oh. the rituals, sir. I'm doing good. Wow, I didn't, the clock wasn't no, working, dude, and so I had assumed that I was like running out of time. But no, I'm, man, I'm you're murdering it. this shit. I'm killing it. Um, after a couple trips for PAX, what has surprised you most about Australia? Julian in Australia. <laughs> so uh, presumably, nothing much would surprise Julian. Yeah. But the weirdest thing about Australia, at least. I was in Sydney and I was in Melbourne, which they call Melbin. Yeah. And for some reason, <laughs> for some reason, I don't and know. they have a really weird. They have a really weird. How thing. did you find out that it was Melbourne? They all kept saying Melbourne. Oh, really? Yeah. On the we were we had landed in Australia. Yeah. And I'm getting off the plane, and the lady in front of me goes, "You know, we've been we've been talking, and you're saying Melbourne. You're about to get off the plane. I'm going to warn you." <laughs> You have to say Melbourne. That's not how it's pronounced. Like, she gave me the heads up. <clears throat> yeah, but she did you a favor. Um, so, so there is a strange thing. At least it was, it was in these two towns, and it may be that this is more common elsewhere, or maybe it's just in those towns. I don't know. I don't have that kind of experience. But here, if you go into an alley, that is a good place to be abducted or murdered. <laughs> right? So you go, you have streets and buildings... And then there are these crevices between buildings where bodies are never found, <laughs> right? And that's my, you know, that's my interaction with the alley as a genre. And they have this other kind of alley there called a laneway, which is like an alley, except instead of getting murder, you get a panini, <laughs> right? So yeah, every every alley you look down, and in my head I expect to see dumpsters. Wait, I you, see, you expect to see dumpsters with an arm, yeah, hanging, hanging out, out, and then the door brought down. But you look down and you see tables and restaurants, like and happy living people, yeah, right, and bookstores in the alley. Yeah, that's someone should tell them. Anyway, it's crazy, but in general, just, you don't, I'm not tuned for Australia living, because I got super hungry, and I was like, man, I need to get a gyro right away. I need to get a kebab. And I talked to this guy, and he's like, well, there's a kebab place down there. You just walk down and get it, but it was about... It's not pronounced kebab, is it? That's how they pronounce it. Yeah. Yeah, see? <clears throat> Thank you. All right. And so the way that it worked was that I just started walking down this dark street, and I got about 10 blocks, and I said, I felt the, the murder feeling. And I said, no, I can't go any farther. I can't push through this fucking murder curtain. I'm going to go back <laughs> to where the lights and the people are. And I, and I went back, and he's like, did you not get anything to eat? And I'm like, no, I didn't want to be killed. <laughs> and he said, do you know what happens when you go out late in Melbourne for a, a kebab? And I was like, what? And he's like, you get a kebab. 
he he just didn't he didn't have that. Yeah. He didn't have that like sort of like spider web encrusted place of fear and terror. For me, the thing that surprised uh, both Karen and I, I think, when we went to the the Melbourne Zoo. Yeah. I don't think they are a litigious people, because there is no care given to your safety at all. Like. Everywhere I went, well, I was like, man, their, their, their danger thresholds are not oh, our it's, danger it's thresholds. Stupid. They had they had a gate, and there was a and it just chomped every five seconds. Yeah, you just you open the gate and close it, and now you are with the animals. Like, and the, and there's a guy there who works there, and he just <laughs> just real politely, he's like, I want to give you a heads up. The emu is in heat, and uh, what? so so if it, this is true, right, Kara? Yeah. See. He says, if he comes over to you, just don't do anything. Just let him go. Let and him like, go what? Let him do I what? I don't know. I don't know. But you're not, you weren't supposed to touch them. The fuck your backpack? Like, what, what do you do with this <laughs> emu? <laughs> right off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a souvenir. Jeez. Uh, no, and then, you know, there's like a water part where they had some seals and stuff. <gasps> Would you have to declare, like, the emu semen, do you think? Or, yeah. yeah. And they just had a catwalk over it with, like, no rails. And I, I, in my head, I'm like, well, this must not be where people go. This is like, if you work here, you are a SEAL trainer. But nope, that's how you get to the monkeys. Like, well, you no. just <laughs> have to walk across the SEAL pit. But dude, the other... The while other someone on the other side is shaking it. The other crazy thing about the Australian zoo is that... So, like, they're normal animals. We don't know what their normal animals are. Yeah, we're, like, taking pictures of the birds in the food area. Yeah, and it's like a pigeon. Yeah. It's not an exciting bird. They're, like, shooing them off. Yeah, exactly. Wait, it's like, th- this is, to them, this is a garbage bird. Right. Get out of here, garbage bird. We but we're like, you. oh, what an incredible species. Look at the plumage. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's an incredible beak. There was one point, did you ever go to the display where it was, like, just, like, a fence about this high, a wooden fence, and there was a picture of an animal. It looked like a big hedgehog. And it said, this animal is in here. You can go try to find it. And... And it's like, please shut the gate. That's it's not like, how our zoos work. No. And so I realized, I'm like, poking around in these bushes. I don't know what the fucking thing is. Like, it was insane. Shooting spines? Yeah. Oh, echidna. A- no, it wasn't, it wasn't an echidna. You don't think so? It was a quip. It started with a Q-U. Quaka. It was a quaka. Google a quaka. It was adorable. Like once we saw Hold it, on, so you did track you did track it down. Yeah, I mean it's just a fluff ball. It looks like a Pokemon. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Does a hot dog count as a sandwich? <laughs> My mind is being torn apart. Like all the systems I had in place to define the universe are being liquefied. Uh, Oh my god, you're right. It is more like a taco. It's like a... No, 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 right? Because it's got the the crease and then it goes... I know why you're saying that. Yeah. It's like... It's a sub. It's a sub? It's a taco sub. It's a tiny sub. (laughs) It's a tiny one-filling sub. Yeah. No. No, I think it's a taco. Have you considered asking Vin Diesel to join in on a session of Acquisitions Incorporated? He's so dreamy. And this is from Rask Chitlin's New South Crin. So maybe not a, a real person or place. Yeah, I mean... I- he, we, well, everyone fancy, knows he no, plays D&D. No, no, but we did a comic about inviting him to play. Yeah. No, but I definitely have a... I mean, I have, like, a, a bucket list of people to get on stage to play. I would love it. If, he, if you're watching this, Mr. Diesel... <laughs> 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 yeah. Please, play with us. Monsieur Diesel. Uh, yeah, Vin Diesel, Felicia Day. That's the combo. That's a good one. I can hang up my mall or whatever after that. I know. I know. She's doing stuff. I don't want to bother. Um, circumspan- no. Circumstances conspire to grant you each creative control over one existing game franchise for the duration of one game 
with a triple A budget and your pick of staff. After you assemble your dream team, you are free to dig into the process personally alongside them in whatever capacity you like or to step back and let them assemble your vision. You can make a sequel, a reboot, a spin-off, or whatever interpretation of that IP you can imagine. Given these parameters, what game would you choose and what do you envision Madden 2017 turn-based? <laughs> now I gotcha. Dude, how fucking banging would that be? That would be, be awesome. Well, you combine it because if you play oh. Madden, if you play Madden on iOS, yeah. it's just a collectible card game. That's right. That's right. And, that, and but some... when the cards battle, you get to play football. Like <laughs> it's it's crazy. I'm hooked on it. Oh, so you're you're actually playing that like Ultimate Team? Is that what they call it? Well, that's what they call it in the on the console. But if you play the iOS version, it's just you collect cards, cards to assemble oh. a team of the best football players you can in history. In history. Uh, I, know, well, I would do. You know what I would want to do? I want to know. That's the get, whole idea. I would get Karen Travis. Ooh. I would get Republic Commando. Oh. And I would get my hands dirty and draw. Oh, and get filthy, some, nasty, and some do commandos. I would do a, yeah. another Star Wars Republic Commando game. Did anybody play Republic Commando back in the day? Yeah. So, really good ideas, right? And I just kind of like, sort of like, sat there by the wayside. Do you know that, like? One of the people who came up with that concept is, I mean, he's behind Halo Guardians. Like, Halo Guardians is like four player. It's basically, I mean, it has a lot in common with Republic Commando somehow. Just picked it up and kept going. I don't know. I'm pretty excited for that. Pack swear word. Let me consider it. What bad movie, book, game, etc. do you most wish was better? Um... You know what? This yeah. might sound bad, uh, but I wish. Um, yeah. What? Something. I don't know. You prefaced it, and now I feel. I tense. really, I really liked Ready Player One, and I think I wish Armada had been better. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I, you don't have to clap for that. I mean, I, I'm sure he's a great guy. I don't want to seem bad, like a mean person. But well, he has a DeLorean. I mean, I think he's doing okay. That's right. The fucker has a DeLorean. Yeah, I think Armada could have been better. Yeah. <laughs> um. For me, I, this is weird. I'm like a I'm like a Gears like Gears fan, like Gears of War fan number one. Like I love Gears of War, and I have gotten the impression that I made up the game in my head. I made up like a different game, and then I played it, and then I just like remixed it in real time. And I added a bunch of things to improve it. I think that most of what I like about Gears of War, I made up. It's just like your fan fiction. Yeah, like narrative and story-wise, but it's like when I look at it, I can't see it. I can't see it at all. Like that would, I mean, that would, for me, that would be a dream job, would be to come in and work on that, like work on that franchise. I think there's a ton of headroom. It's the same thing like with those, like those uh, amazing like Halo args and stuff like that. I yeah. hate it when commercials for games have better story and more, like, emotional resonance than the games. Well, I mean, in, in all honesty, the, that's what our strips are. Like, when we do something like the, the Destiny comics... Fan fiction. Yeah, those are commercials. I mean, they hire us to do them. Obviously, we wouldn't do them if we yeah. weren't in love with the game anyway. Yeah. But, yeah, that's a commercial. But that commercial, I like to think, has, like, story hooks in it, you know? Like, there's material there for fans of the game. Yeah. Okay, I know that both of you played Bloodborne. Did either of you actually finish the game? No. Uh, Bob G in Wisconsin. No way. No way. It's so hard. It's like the, the problem with the problem with those games that are super tough is that you sort of. I mean, eventually, because you can't like just play through it. Like you can't just start like like Uncharted or something like that. Right. Like you get really good. And it's like you miss a jump, and then the next time you go through, you catch the jump. It doesn't have the same loop where you're fighting the cleric beast for a week right. because you have completely all the wrong way of playing this game, right? So, I think I crashed. Oh, yeah? With Bloodborne, the problem with Bloodborne is that you sort of have to create a bunch of miniature games inside of it that you can play and beat. And so for me, like, I had spent so much time working toward defeating Father Gascon 
that by the time I actually got through there and beat him, I had the feeling that I had won, <laughs> even though I had not completed the game in any way, right? Well, you set up small goals for yourself. That's you, right, and right? I felt so good. Like, I felt as good after defeating the second boss of Bloodborne that I do over beating entire other games. Yeah. And also, it took me the same amount of time or longer than another game. <laughs> Um, but obviously, I love the story. I spent a ton of time in the wiki. I'm a huge fan of that setting. I'd love to do some uh, fan fiction for that. Manga Studio crashed. <sighs> I think I got a save off, though. That would be great. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool if you were Wouldn't able to save cool? your work? Wouldn't that be cool? I know you guys had a cat a million years ago. What is your pet situation now? What about the other PA staffers? Uh, we have a dog as a family. But you traded in your, your, your cats, right? The dog did not get along with the cats, and we liked the dog a lot better than the cats. <laughs> so, so these are these gruesome realities, right? Well, I had been a cat person for a while. We'd had cats, and then we got a dog, and I was like, oh, this is what it's like to have a pet. Like... I, oh, yeah, it's like, it's like a creature yeah. that likes you. This thing is here, and it's a part of my family, and it loves me, and, like, I can interact with it. Yeah. It and it doesn't cool. hate you. Right. Right. Um, now, we have Joan Fluffy Socks. That's our tuxedo cat at home. Um, and I have a complicated relationship with this cat, but... Uh, when in doubt, yeah. restart. Exactly. No, I, but I feel like... I'm not, like, I'm not even mad at the cat. I feel like the cat's making me a better person. I feel like I need to bring myself in line with the cat's needs. Did you needs. save the word pad? Did I save the word pad? Did you save it? Did you save your work? No. I never, I never, ha I never had... You can save it. Would you ever consider recording your tabletop games and releasing them as podcasts outside of your Acquisitions Incorporated stuff? Sean Herndon, late what? Charles. Oh, awesome. <laughs> oh. Is that up on the big screen? Fucking Windows. <laughs> All right. Sorry, go ahead. Hey, it's cool. Um, yeah, so, so on the staff podcast, um, we recorded a game of Gloom that I thought turned out pretty funny. Um, but as far as like recording other tabletop games, I, I mean, my mission is not to record other tabletop games. My mission is to give is to make more Acquisitions Incorporated stuff that lasts throughout the year. Yeah, that is my tabletop game. Yeah, I, I, want, I want Acquisitions Incorporated to be like a show that you like, that you can just watch, because it's on, and we made more of it so you could have it. I feel like, that's, I feel like that is a much better system. Um, but I would say that in general this year, like Acquisitions Incorporated is something we're trying to take super seriously. Like if you go talk to Scott, over at the Table Titans booth. He's got Acquisitions Incorporated shirts. Like, it took us 10 years, but we figured it out eventually. Uh, just wrote a DM screen, like an Acquisitions Incorporated DM screen where inside it has all the tables and all, like, the game data, but none of it's real. It's all nonsense. Like, where you, where you would see, like, um, character conditions, like, you know, uh, unconscious or whatever, it has, like, fucked... And you know what I mean, like it just, but with you know synthetic game rules to accompany it. But yeah, my plan is to is to just get really serious about acquisitions incorporated. Like, you know, it takes us a long time to figure it out, but eventually we figure out what you like after you know telling us for ten years. What is a game series of games that you enjoyed immensely or hated when you were younger, but feel differently about today? Why? Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm usually, I usually try to play new stuff and, and get forward. I mean, I, I guess Gears does apply to that because I have a synthetic version of Gears that I play. What did I play a long time ago? Uh, I don't know. I can't think of anything that I've sort of, like, given up on, really. I mean... The hardcore JRPG, it seems like that's yeah, not... Yeah, that was, that was not something that's come back. I don't do those anymore, and... And really, I don't know that I can ever do an MMO again. I've tried to come back and you, do you, like, you think it's just messed up? Yeah. Like, like all the reward structures that just, you just well, see them now? 
Wow. You're like, I know what that is. It's like whenever I see the reward structures. Been great. Yeah, it's like when I, when I level up and it goes, wow. Yeah. And then the fireworks go off. Woo! It's like for me, that's like that glowing dealy bobber, like at the end of an angler fish. Oh, yeah. Like I'm like, no, no, no. That's a dealy bobber. Right. I know all about it. I know there's a mouth. I know how it works. Yeah, until, until that gets figured out, or until somebody makes something, you know, radically different in that genre, I don't think I can do those anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would say that's radically different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically what Destiny does for you is it offers that reward structure, but it has an immediate um, interesting gameplay loop, yeah. which the MMO isn't delivering. It tends to be yeah, sort of the, diffuse. Yeah, the second-to-second -second gameplay in Destiny to me is exciting. But, but if, we, if we look back at the guts, that's its MMO Oh, it's for days. an MMO, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Very clarifying statement from the audience. Has either of you ever got in trouble with Kara or Brenna about how they were portrayed in the comic and upset them? If so, which comic? <laughs> uh, Follow-up question, would you ever let Kara and Brenna make a strip? But we've had that fantasy forever. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever gotten in trouble. We've been very careful. I'll, t I'll tell you something that does happen. Yeah. If we think, <laughs> we have thought that Kara would not like the strip, and so then we did oh, your, a story from your life as Brenna and I. Yeah, we've done that. Or we've done... We just we'll transposed give, it, right? We'll give our wives' lines to each other so that a discussion that I had with Taika was actually a discussion I had with Kara, but, you know, he had with Brenna. Yeah, yeah. Just like filing off the serial numbers That's of right. the conversations. They'll never trace it back. For Jerry, does should, Elliot still take eat... This one. What's that? You should take this one. Okay, I'll do it. Uh, does Elliot still eat chicken, having learned the origins of the meat, namely chickens? <laughs> or has he parted ways with this most delicious bird? If the latter, does he know chicken can be served fried? Or made into soup? Both are pretty great. Please advise. <laughs> this is from the U.S. Poultry and Egg Association. Um... <laughs> Tucker, Georgia. Um, the, the reality is that I can just tell him it's any other creature and he'll be fine. If you could retcon the ever-loving shit out of one beloved franchise with your newly established timeline being canonical, which franchise would you butcher slash mercy slash neuter and how? Matthew and Woodstown. Hmm to create new canon. Yeah. Destiny. Destiny? Yeah. I would take all the fan fiction I've been posting in Reddit. <laughs> and I would make it real. And it would be real. <laughs> you would turn it into a real boy? Yeah. Let's see. I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the games I play, I play because I, I really like what they're doing for the most part. Um, and then, uh, I can't, if I, if I say Gears again, then I'm just being mean. Um... That would be good. I'm going to let that simmer for a second. Are there any crazy behind-the-scenes stories that you have previously kept hushed, but now enough time has passed that you'd be willing to reveal them? Hmm. I don't know. Any secrets that we kept hushed? Man, I mean, the, people often ask for like the crazy story, but this whole fucking shit is crazy. I yeah, can't I mean, compartmentalize something... some of the crazy shit, like making JPEGs for a living, like independent of the other crazy <laughs> shit. If something crazy happens to us, that's well, a comic. Speak, yeah, generally speaking, that is, that is, you know, material for us. Yeah. We usually put that stuff straight out there. No, I can't think of anything that's been a secret. No, no, no. Like when Jack Thompson, like, tried to sick the FBI on us, like... That yeah, page is going right up on the web, all, you know. All public. Yeah, or you're calling him on the phone and yeah. <laughs> we're telling people about the conversation. I mean, I don't know. A Jerry date? From high school. I didn't date in high school. Oh, no, but I, I already told about it. I, mean, I told him yeah, about Yeah, you've told some stories about me. They're out there. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. 
No. <laughs> there will never be enough time. No. Which of the combined set of your children is the most twisp and which is the most catsby? Uh, behind, this is um, from the thinking bear in French, <laughs> behind the large tree. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, so they wrote it in French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would definitely say Gabe would be uh, catsby. Yeah. Twist, yeah. 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 I mean, I, it's gonna Elliot happen. The one of these, one of these days, one of these days, we're gonna get these two together, and something mystical is gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they did really good, and uh, on that trip to NASA. Yeah. Then had them together. The NASA trip was really good. I that was super fun. Well, yeah. We we played the uh, we played the brains game. Yeah. All right. What career? Would you have wanted to pursue if PA really had ended in the early 2000s dot com bust? Uh, Ian McTavish, Canada. Uh, I mean, I would have kept trying to get into comic books. You know, uh, you would have, you would have continued to photocopy them. Yeah. And then ask the person at the register if you could place them by the register. Yeah. And I would. for a quarter. Yeah. That would, that, that would have been your business yeah, plan? Yeah, there's nothing else I can do. <laughs> I, I mean, the idea that, like... That there's another option. <laughs> yeah, this is it. This is all I've got. It's like if we look at this character sheet, like, all the points are inside it to the left. It's and true. And it's just all the points are going down like this. And there's no other points in the other stuff. Yeah, when you watch me at the, at the Acquisitions Inc. table, I'm literally adding those numbers with my fingers. I don't know how to do it in my head. Like, I can't, I don't understand numbers at all. I don't recognize faces. I can't remember people. <laughs> I don't like talking to them. Like, it wouldn't have worked out for me, man. It would have been a bad spot. Um, yeah, I mean, back then I was mostly, I was doing my IT thing. I mean, I guess I would have just continued to fix printers and hate it. Um, you know what I mean? Until I died in a freak printer accident, I guess. Like the ultimate paper jam. The paper jam they're still talking about. I've heard you enjoy making Ironwood, Automata, and Sand comics, but have trouble finding time to do so. Uh, would you consider doing a Kickstarter to motivate work in this direction? I dare you to ask the audience how much they want more of these comics. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this is from Daniel Slinger in Edmonton, Alberta. Um, I mean, it's, it's really it's, just it's, a matter. No, of... it's not. It's not money. No, because we would do it for free and have done it for free in the past. It's not about. It's not about money. It's the primary resource here. You know, how, like when you're playing a freemium game, and you get like silver, which is like the shit currency, and then you have like Smurf berries or whatever. Like in our lives, time is the Smurf berry. Like that's the premium currency, right? In my life, time <laughs> is the. Smurf that but it is, right? Yeah. That's, the, that's the limiting factor right there, except I can't just give them my credit card and get more of it. That's the difference. Yeah. Um, I'll say that, I mean, when is your Thornwatch panel? Sunday. Yeah. So after, after your Thornwatch panel, some of that will be clarified, I guess. That's true. Um, and then, you know, once people know that, then they'll understand what is motivating me to get the novel finished. Right? So, yes, thank you. It, the status is shit. The status <laughs> is that I can't write it all and I'm a monster. That's where we're at. That's what's up. The status uh, is I'm a failure. Yeah. The status is I'm, I'm a hole from which art cannot escape. <laughs> um, any, plans to, any plans to evolve Air D&D &D into a real app? God, that would ball out of control. You have to ask Gav, right? Yeah, I gotta ask Gav. Good design? You got the UI, I guess? I don't know. Um, I know it was only uh, inspiration for your post-comic, but seriously, I know a number of people, myself included, that would support crown, crowdfund kickstart this idea. It's a really good idea. If not, can I? Yeah. No, it's, but it's like all the things that you would need like for dating, but it's like you're, you're elf. Yeah. So it's like you, you see them, you get the picture, and it's like you're just scrolling through their characters. It's like I swipe right on this cleric. Look at their stats. <laughs> Unaligned, interesting. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Oh, Clerk of Time Mora, swipe left. <laughs> That's not for me. 
I don't know. I, I, I think that that could be an incredible, I think that could be an incredible app. I, I, I'm surprised it's not real already. Jerry, I draw your attention to the Penny Arcade comic dated, I always love it when it starts like this. What? Um, I don't know. March 23rd, 2015, entitled The Facts and its accompanying podcast, season four, episode 26, wherein, like some barbarian, you refer to peristyliums. What? I don't know. Any, re any respecting wordsmith would realize the proper pluralization of peristylium is peristylia, especially as it is mentioned as such in the first minutes of the intro you're discussing. What do you have to say for your crimes? John Okoyama... Japan. I think he likes Final Fantasy way more than you do. Yeah, I think that that's true. John, in my defense, incredibly high. <laughs> um, I think that's... Is that, is that not a good defense? I don't, I'm not sure if you know how defense works. Cool. You'd better red envelope this shit. One. Did he? He did. All right. One. What is the swear word this year? I'll figure it out in a second. Uh, two, get everyone to crack their knuckles. So Paul is a person who knows the ancient rituals and wants them respected at this hallowed show. Paul, we can satisfy your request. One, two, three, and then, right? We know how to do it. We don't do it on three, right? No. One, two, three. All right. I felt that in the bones of my neck. The swear word this year, let's see. Oh, I have a signer. Oh my God, this is the, this is an incredible opportunity. We also we also have our kids in the audience. We have the kids, but it's going to be so it's going to be so novel. They won't be able to they won't be able to hook up all the wires. All right. Yeah, earmuffs. <laughs> yeah, earmuffs. Now, earmuffs is not the swear word. Cream flap. Oh, flap is horrible. <laughs> this is the, that's the cream? <laughs> what's, what's, He's not what's talking this part? to you, man. What's this, what's this part? Look at it go. Look at it. It's going crazy. <laughs> Good. It has a mind of its own. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, want, I want him to come with me after I leave here and just be with me. <laughs> I just want to be together. Does Chris Straub know you know his penis is gigantic? <laughs> oh. oh, I didn't see it. Oh. <laughs> here, here, here. No, don't worry. No, no, listen, problem solved, everybody. I got it. Everybody pay attention. Does Chris Straub know that you know his penis is gigantic. <laughs> is he comfortable with that knowledge? Are you? Now, I mean, I, but I only know it like third hand, right? I mean, so I to speak. Yeah, yeah, so to speak. I don't have... No, we know it. I'm not a primary source. Don't we know it second hand? We know it second hand. We know it's, we know it's second. We, we know, know that it has a hand. second hand. <laughs> we know that it is, we know that his incredible device is also a timepiece. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, two hands. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, we, I've yeah. never spoken with no, him about we, it, no, though. No, I have spoken with him a little bit about it. And he's, he's definitely, you have? Yeah. Well, no, because I heard it was crazy, and I was like, Chris, man, I heard you take his nuts. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know me. No, when you were no, no, told, you know me. No, when, I, when no, you were told a secret, you don't go to the person who the secret is told about. Maybe you don't, but I do. 
<laughs> you went to him that day to his office. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And I was like, I was like, crap. Let me see it. I was like, crap. You know? What are you swinging? I've got a note cutting board. I'm going to lay it down, fucking get the thing out here. Um, no, no, no. I, I, when I was in Ireland, like the first two days, I'm in the pub. I'm sitting down with some people. I'm like, what is going on with the British? What's the deal with these guys? <laughs> right? And they hooked me up. Yeah. You have to be direct. You have to be direct. And so he did not want to talk to me about it, but I can tell you what I've heard. I can tell I you. I don't care. I, I heard the same thing you did. I'm saying I know it. I just didn't go to him and confront him with it. Okay, so, but, but let's, co- let's sort of compare notes. Like, let's, let's talk about, <coughs> right? No. Here, and pick uh, another well, question. Well, here, I'm going to throw out a couple of adjectives, and you tell me if they match up with what you know. Are you ready? Okay. Gnarled. No. No, I didn't hear gnarled. Beak-like. No, I didn't hear beak-like. We might not have, maybe we're talking about a different thing. That is embarrassing. Mike, Jerry, you've been rocking PAX for a while now. What's it like to be on stage now compared to a few years ago? Is it stressful to be the center of attention at a huge gathering of people? And finally, what is it like to go home uh, from nerd god, king, nerd god kings at PAX uh, to back home amongst the normies? Uh, this is from Christopher Gilroy, uh, home of the Garlic Festival, Forever mm. Vampire Free. Gilroy? I'm, I'm with it. I'll have to check that out. I'm with it. I hate vampires. Uh, um, I'll tell you the weirdest thing for me is, you know, I have friends... Once you have kids, you end up having friends that are parents in your neighborhood. And they don't know me as anything but the guy on the corner, right? And our kids go to the same school. Right, right. And so you have to constantly remind them. I'm so famous. Yes. No, I don't say anything. Like, kneel before my dark throne, yeah, that kind but, of stuff, yeah. But, I, you know, when they, come, when they come to the show, it's very weird to be in front of, like, talking to someone who doesn't know that you... They don't know who you are. Yeah. It's, it's, that is weird. It's like they're seeing a secret side of you or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we also, we deal with the social aspect differently, right? Yeah. So when you come home from here, you're sort of like shell-shocked. Oh, I have to, yeah, I go away for a while. Yeah, 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 I have yeah. to be in alone, quiet you, time. You just drift. Yeah. Right? Psychically, you drift. You become untethered. I Whereas do. Whereas for me, like, I get, the days after packs are really, really lonely. Like, it's really, really hard. Like, I just, I've sort of, I'm, the person I have to be here is very, very social, but that's not ordinary for me. But right. it's, that process is still running, right? It's like I have to control, delete, and fucking close it. Doing text? Doing text. Nice. 15 minutes left. You got it. You got it, oh, kid. I'll, I'll get the hot dog for you. First, I got to make sure the comic is done. <laughs> that's job one. <laughs> It's two- I, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. It's 2016, and the Oculus Valve VR set headsets have arrived at the PA office. Working alone at the office late one night, you discover a VR program on the other's computer marked private. Against your better judgment, you open it. What nightmare vision assails your senses and scars you for life? <laughs> Bonus, what VR program does Robert run that no one knows about? (laughs) Yeah, God, what would that be for you? What does a Morak crave? Uh, Well, I I know, I actually know know. exactly what it would be. So you've done this demo a couple times here. Like, if you actually had this device, all you would do was live inside that 3D painting program. absolutely, yeah. You'd have to pull me out of it, keeping it streaming. No, what you ended up painting in there... Is a separate issue. Oh, you mean my new friends? Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, I'm back. Yeah. Oh, I'm like a weirdo. This is the real world, huh? <laughs> um, but basically, but you were over there doing some kind of a competition, and you you said that like drawing in this 3D space, like you drew a fruit fucker, but it was like frosting a cake. Like you had to make this volume. Yeah, it was weird, right? Because you draw, I, I draw a circle, and it's hanging there in space in front of me. And then I walk to the side of it, and I can see that now it's, it's lumpy, thin, right? You know, but it, it, it's lumpy. So I have to draw another circle that way. So now I have two for reference. I draw a circle this way, and now I start frosting it, right? right? 
It's like sculpting more, really. They're sort of putting clay on something. But, exactly, but, but that's what people say that it's like sculpting, but when you sculpt, there is something. This is yeah, like sculpting reality. <laughs> well, what's funny is they have the picture of you drawing in the room by yourself, and then what you see is shown on the other monitor. And so I'm down on the ground, like, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, you're basically, like you this. look like a fucking crazy I look like a weirdo. person. Yeah. People do this, and it's not cool, right? Right. But what's fun is, you know, I'm painting FF, and I, I'm painting his shell, the silver shell, and I'm, I'm filling it all in. And I realize, I'm trying to think, how do I need to find a lighter gradient of gray to sort of paint some highlights? But I've painted his dealy bobber with light. It's and so glowing? It just, well, no, his bobber on the top. Oh, oh, right. And so it is casting a shadow on everything I paint below it. Because you, you made light. Because I made light. <laughs> yeah, it was incredible. A real, hold on, a real shadow that's like cast? Yes, so I draw him. Whoa. And his dealy bobber is creating a shadow on the ground of the painting that I made. What the fuck? It was nuts, man. Um, it's the future. Oh, the, the, the VR program Robert runs that no one knows about is like an MMO where he plays as a cell in an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> and like, no matter where he looks, there are more empty cells he can put functions in. Uh, and then we lose him forever. Um, in which state would you live? Oh, that's not text. See, this is what happens when you put text in there that isn't dialogue. Michael, I, I only want to please you. I don't even see the letters. <laughs> this is just shit I have to put over my art. <laughs> Everything I create! Uh, in which state would you live if not Washington? Oregon. Yeah. Oregon. <laughs> That's not hard. Washington, D.C. Uh. <laughs> No, Oregon, that's the easiest call on earth. You're exactly right. Hawaii uh, would be cool. Yeah, it's some like it. <clears throat> what other comic do you wish you could create for one week uh, or some other arbitrary amount of time? That's the easiest thing on earth. Like someone else's comic or yeah. like a made-up comic? Yeah, well, either way. I mean, it's, it's ambiguous, so you can take advantage of it. For me, that's, that's the easiest call. That's just Brood Hollow. Yeah. That's just... Chris Straub's Brood Hollow. The reality is that sometimes I'll just write Brood Hollow fan fiction and sometimes it ends up in the strip. Like, that's, that's when I know it's a good day. It's like, you, you, I didn't have to use my AK and some of my uh, stuff got into Brood Hollow. For me, that's, that's how that's I define a good, a good day. day. Yeah. I would, I would love to just be able to do Nightlight for a while and not anything else. No, just, just back up. Yeah. Just keep flushing out the Figuring the that setting. world out, yeah. Yeah. Easy call. Thank you. 2004 uh, brought us the greater internet fuckwad theory, uh, but do you think the internet might actually be getting worse? Absolutely. Um, as part of one of the last generations of people who grew up without the internet, it seems like people are getting progressively more aggressive and shitty in a way that I don't actively remember from the early 2000s. Uh, especially as parents, do you find your relationship to the internet becoming increasingly strained? Um, yeah, I have, to, I have to do the stuff at home that I used to do when I was, like, trying to protect library computers. Like, I have to, like, lock machines down and, like, set up security policies and, like, maintain, like, valid lists of URLs. And, like, yeah. it basically, as a parent, like, you have to, like, run IT at home, right? Yeah, um, yeah because, you know, they'll go onto YouTube, for example, and the video will start out like a normal, like, My Little Pony video, and then, like, at the end of the video, um, ch you know, Chica from fucking Five Nights will come out, and then your son won't be able to sleep for two weeks, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, I mean, and, that's, and that's a relatively minor form of trolling. I mean, that's not even personal. That's just, like, a scary bird, right? It's a really scary it's bird. It's the though. worst bird! Yeah. Um, you know, so you have to... There's all kinds of stuff that you have to manage that is just completely new and absolutely in terms of it no this worse, is this though, is like i think it is i think, I think there's I more will, opportunities i think there's I just i think there's more opportunities there's more opportunities to, to for people worse. to be bad yeah like we had to create our own website to be bad like we were at the time <laughs> yeah like, exactly it's like there's no place for us to be where can i be an <laughs> asshole that someone will see me nowhere i have to make it myself 
Maybe that's it. Maybe now I'm just jealous. I mean, I could have just done this on a message board, on Twitter. You could have saved yourself a lot of time, yeah. Michael. After authoring more than 2,500 individual comic strips, is that true? That can't possibly be true. I have no idea. 2,500? What do you mean? For real? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do that later. I'm going to use a calculator. Um, how do you avoid labeling comic strips with duplicate titles? <laughs> Has Jerry maintained a title database to assist him in this endeavor <laughs> over the years? Or is your perseverance in consistently selecting uh, unique titles simply a product of sheer luck slash virile linguistic proficiency? Mm. James, extra points for you, Chattanooga, Tennessee. <clears throat> um, yeah, if I try to save it with the same title, it comes up and says that you already used that. <laughs> and it happens all the time. So, I'm not, I'm not that cool. We but reuse you, jokes, though, sometimes. Yeah, exactly. We, we reuse whole strips. There was one strip where we had actually done a strip like on a similar thing. Yeah. And then the name that I put in was the same name as I had chosen <laughs> for the original strip. And I was like, man, if anybody ever found out. <clears throat> it's meta. Thank goodness they didn't. <laughs> Now that you're parents, what ideas about economics and politics have you significantly changed your opinions on? Uh, what fears have you shed and what new fears have replaced them? Is that a red envelope? No, that's a white envelope. It's from about light. politics? Yeah, and economics. Uh, what views have changed since becoming a father? Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe nothing. Uh, no, I mean you, you you have to. You know what it is. So I'm flying is pure horror. Like I don't really like it. It's bad, right? Yeah. And I realized once, you know, when I was flying with Elliot, that I was clearly terrified. Mm -hmm. And then I was like. But he's going to see this and think that he's supposed to be terrified of this. Right. So I had to become someone for whom this scary thing was okay so that he could be okay. So most of it, like most of when something scary comes up or something contentious, I just try to present it like this is an interesting new question. Um, even though I may be internally horrified. And I just, I try to, I, that's my policy for all new information. I said, well, what do we think about this? Isn't this novel? You can make guns now on a printer. Ha, 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 ha. What does that mean for our society? Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, my, my new policy is just to treat everything as though it was an interesting question. Unless it, like, specifically involves a venomous snake, then I, I'm a little more proactive, you know. I try to, like, get it away. Yeah, for me... Well, well, thank you. For me, it became about avoiding material about kids and families in trouble or in danger, like movies, <coughs> like The Road. Oh, yeah. Like, nope, can't watch yeah, it. Yeah, there, there's a show, I think it's called Broadchurch. And I was like, oh, man, it has a, a Time Lord that I used to really enjoy. I'm going to watch this show. And then five minutes in, it's like, oh, something terrible has happened to a child that looks strangely like your own. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> We're out of here. Nope. Nope. Pull I'm checking out. Board. I can't. I can't handle that, and I don't need it. It's too, I mean, it's, it's too effective. It's too effective. Like, once that, once that structure is built in you, that taking care of young people structure, like, man, they can manipulate you with that. Uh, Tycho, I have five songs from the fine print album, possibly titled $484. I once heard a mystical sixth song, sixth song on Groove Shark. Where can I acquire a complete discography in the albums themselves? This is from Sphagnum. Um, yeah, it was, it was called $484 because that's how much it cost to record it at the, at the studio. It was like a church slash coffee shop slash recording studio, hmm. which happens sometimes. Um, but it was, it, was, it was pretty sick. Um, man, he, he has more of these fine print songs than I have. Like, I don't even know where to get those anymore. Yeah, six songs. I, I mean, I, I, did I make these other songs? I don't know. Are they even fine print songs? 
I don't know. If yeah, if you really want to um, loathe me uh, for some reason, definitely check out some of those fine print lyrics. That'll be a real hoot. Three L's, a triple L scenario. She will be here soon, and she will need skin boots. Oh, there's. Well, it's already in Manga Studio, so it's been rasterized, asshole. <laughs> He has to donate a hundred dollars to Child's Here, Play, and I'm leaving what, it in. <coughs> what? You know what the best is? I don't even have to know what rasterizing is. <laughs> I don't know what that is, and I don't care. Um, a tsunami is about to strike the city. You could have warned me about this before. This wrong. What's well, a red envelope? At least Robert got this one correctly. Yeah. Um, you each have enough time to share one thing with the other. What do you say? Oh, er, e. If you're gonna get a like a, a Caesar salad, get the chicken and not the shrimp. I would say just go with the chicken instead. And I would say you get the chicken too. <laughs> ah! All right. Uh, if was Jim, that you being overtaken by the tsunami? I was being swept away. Oh. Yes. If Jing Dark Magic and Omen Drawn were to die or retire. What sort of new characters do you have rattling around in your heads? Also, assuming Chris Perkins doesn't approve of anything like John Black Magic of the Rhode Island Black Magics. <laughs> uh, Scott Corpany, Utah. That's the easiest call in the world. I would, as soon as Omen uh, was disintegrated yeah. or something else happened that uh, he was not resurrectable from, I would immediately begin playing Auspicia Drawn of Drawn Enterprises and we would just continue on as though nothing had happened. Uh, I don't have another character that I would play. I don't know. I love Jim. I can't imagine not having Jim. It was your first character, right? Yeah. You never, you never had to switch out. No, my characters never died. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, we I've all I've been know dead-ish. <laughs> dead-ish? Yeah. We all know that Penny Arcade started while the two of you were living together in an apartment. Suppose that circumstances require a current PA staff member to move in with you to live for a year. Who do you choose and why? A current PA staff member to live with you for a year. Who could I live with? I could live with Kiko. Yeah. Uh, I could live with... I'm going to go down the... <laughs> Order them, val evaluate them, assess them. That might be it. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love them all. Um, Mike Krahulik. I thought, I would assume that wouldn't, didn't it say excluding the other? I do what I want. Yeah, yeah. Did, did you require is, the current PA staff member? Are you technically a staff member? Time is up. I'm going to finish this. Or Eric Bronham. Iron sharpens iron. He's my gym bro. Um, did, you, did you complete? Are you it's done and it has a hot dog fairy. Hot dog fairy. I love it. Let's shrink it down. Let's show the people. Let's give them what they want. There it is. Thank you very Ladies much. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Creative Script Panel, PAX Prime 2015. An absolute pleasure to share the afternoon with all of you. We'll see you again.